if you move forward with um, photography, dental photography, we see a lot of materials. This is just one of our actually really hands-on workshops we, we did here in, in the laboratory in Miami. Um, and what you see is just a, on the left side, total chaos. Uh, you see all these different devices laying around. And that's how photography is. We have so much stuff, what we maybe need and maybe not. So also the question is always, how much do I have to invest in a good equipment to actually do dental photography? You can go crazy with dental photography. You can do the necessary things in terms of shape communication and aesthetic photos. And you don't really have to go overboard with that, to be very clear. Um, if there are any questions in terms of more detailed equipment, please email us after the session and I'm happy to email you back what I'm really using and also what I would recommend basically to not go crazy in terms of budget. So anyway, so let's just move forward. Um, and I want to show you this. And as you can tell, there are multiple things that are just not correct. And um, if I see this, it's, it's a, it should be a shade communication. That should be basically a shade taken. On the left side, I see the shade tab. I can read it's a 4L 1.5, which is, which is great. But I have a big finger in the lip, basically. The tooth is not really visible. It's just half or, or three quarters of the tooth. That's not enough. I have to see the whole tooth. So retraction on shade communication or the photography is extremely important that I get everything out of the way, basically, what I really don't want to see, right? So now the next picture on the right side, when I look at this, it's great. I see a shade tab, I see teeth, I see a very nice close up. The photo is okay, yeah, but what I don't see is the color. So this is what I'm getting a lot. Emails or text messages with shades for a patient, and I actually don't see the color. So don't forget, there is a shade tab and there is a code on the shade tab which tells us the color of that shade tab. That's extremely important for communication to me or to the laboratory that we know what we're actually looking at. So I wanted to start with a negative example, right? So now let's move over to something more positive. So just in, in, in terms of photography. Yeah, so this is definitely a very nice example of photography because I have a nice frame and I see basically what I would like to see to do that case. So for me, when I'm doing the anterior case, I always like to see photos of that patient. I always also like to see the face. We, in the past meetings, we discussed smile design and smile, smile analysis, facial analysis, for example. I mean, I already stressed it there. It's very important for me to see the whole face. Also, it's very important to me if I want to do an anterior case, I'm going to see basically the frame from at least canine to canine. I prefer premolar to premolar to see a little bit of the buccal corridor and see what we actually have to do here. In this case, very nice, very, very in focus. The preparations, I see two different colors basically, and that allows me to make a material decision and also allows me then to actually do a really nice aesthetic job and finish this case. Um, here, as the final kind of the beauty shot, we used a, a special, um, we call it the donut. I will show it in, in, a, in a few slides, in a few minutes, basically what we're using in terms of equipment. But this is basically a, a very special flash, what we're using to make everything nice and glossy and everything is nice highlighted, what has to be highlighted. And also it's just blending in everything nicely for a nice, we call it the beauty shot basically. So that's kind of what we like to do when we have these cases. And uh, it's an overexposed, it's rather a hair underexposed. Uh, what means overexposed would be bright, underexposed a little bit on the dark side. So I can actually then on a computer adjust the exposure a little bit to bring it up if I have to. So now, if I now come more to a shade communication for the laboratory, if you want to send us a case and you're not sure what kind of pictures um, does Alex want to see, right? Um, I prefer always having three shade tabs, three shade tabs from light to dark. Always kind of one more on the lighter side, one shade tip more the darker side, and one in the middle that I can kind of measure the shade of that tooth on my bench later on. because um, the question always comes up, well, can we calibrate monitors or screens, basically, that we really can have a one-on-one -on -one shade uh, communication? 
Yes, you can, but it doesn't really make sense because you have to calibrate the screen on a regular basis to really uh, have a sense for communication on that, basically. So it doesn't really make sense. So I prefer just having three shade tabs. Everything is visible. You see here I have my code of the color, 5M3, 5M2, and 4M1. I use the same natural tooth of the patient to kind of transfer and communicate that color. Yeah? So this is more for the incisal, this is more for the midsection, yeah, or for the hue, and this is more for kind of the body and, and cervical color here. And um, that can even be darker, yeah? but that's already a dark shade, so that's a five and three is one of the darkest we can look at the 3D master. So this is basically what I would like to see. And you see every position of that tooth and of the JTAP is the same same angulation, same position. So that is extremely important for me um, to kind of have a consistency on color communication. Yeah? So that's kind of important to, to look at. And then we are able to finish a case nice and aesthetically. That's by the way, it's a full contour zirconia case. Um, you can see there can be aesthetic. Yeah? So, but we don't wanna go too deep into the material selection today. So that was a pretty straightforward shade, pretty straightforward case. So now it's going to something more complex. Something more complex like this, of course, two centrals, it's never easy, right? When we look at this, ca this case here, and um, I do the same thing, yeah? So, or you do the same thing, you retract nicely that nothing is in the way, that's very important. You choose the right angulation, we will talk about a camera angulation to the face in a few slides, and you choose your shaped tabs you wanna communicate to me. Now, the question is what kind of shade tips are we going to use? If it's the linear guide, these are these uh, one and one, one and two, these are called 3D Master from Vida, or are we using the classic? In general, it's secondary. Whatever fits best, you can even use both. When I have a patient here, we do shade taken on the patient, we lose, I use both, you know, whatever fits the best. Um, for shade evaluation for your chair side, the linear guide is most likely nicer because you really can go from chroma and from age of the tooth kind of down, which is really cool. Um, that would totally blast the time today. So we will not talk about this, yeah? But we'll, we'll make it, maybe do another webinar about that or even if a nice, nice hands-on course. Um, so now then you see on the other side, we choose a little bit of lighter shade. So we're on a C2, C1 basically, just to get that communication out. But now very important as well, we talk about an anterior case and look at these preparations. They're very, very dark and they're even a little bit different to each other. So very, very important is for me in, in the laboratory is the stump shade. So there are stump shade guides as well, but also you can use just the classic or the linear guide to get me an idea how dark or how light is that stump. Very important for me because that also helps me to make a material decision or to help you to make the right material decision that we have a successful case. That's extremely important. So always, you're prepping already, yeah? Always make a photo of the stump shade. And if it's just with your smartphone and the shade guide for a direction of the shade, then I know that. So that should be in your protocol. Doesn't matter what it is, at least for every anterior case, at least for the second premolar, I would always prefer that. Make always a stump shade photo. Very, very important. And then we are able basically to successful the, the, the case nicely in, in the nice shade. And I think that was definitely a, a nice success, um, especially in translucencies and stuff. So we can actually then give you back. Um, by the way, photography here from, from Dr. Lufus Maribel, um, she did a phenomenal job here. And um, I will talk about different setups in a little bit as well. Uh, that's a very nice setup with a, with a twin flash basically. And I think she used some soft boxes that um, it's not too shiny, it's nice, it as a soft uh, light on there. So that's really a beautiful uh, final photo of that patient. So now this case uh, is, I wanna talk a little bit about communication itself. I did this case with Dr. William Martin at the University of, of Florida in Gainesville. And um, it's an anterior case. So he basically made all the photos uh, we're planning basically to do an implant case here with a surgical guide, a immediate prov provisionization, and then a final crown of number eight. Um, in terms of communication, he did a fantastic job to actually communicate 
um, to me the color, the history of the case, what's going on. And I'll just play this and just, just listen a little bit. I will stop it then, it would be too long for today, but just that you know what's possible nowadays. Can I hear you? Uh, so I'm gonna stop here. I just got a notification that the sound was not on on the video. I apologize for that. I don't know why. Uh, we did the sound check before, so I don't know what's going on. But anyway, so I wanna uh, show you basically that um, he actually sent me a little video with sound where he explains the shade, the coloration of these different foot photographs and it's, it's much more detailed as you'd usually write down in an Rx. So that kind of helped a lot. Um, it, it's around a minute and a half, the videos, it's not a lot of time. Uh, what definitely is in communication, an amazing task to do, to make a little screen video and talk to that and just send that video to your laboratory or to Alex. Um, just for, for, for us to open it, to listen to it, and to make our own notes here and then uh, basically finish or, or follow up with the case. Um, so with that case, basically same thing, we, we worked on um, the shake communication and I got the photos, I can blow them up a little bit to make them bigger. Here it's the same photo, just zoomed in basically. So there, there is the shade tab visible, yeah, so four in one. And then we are able to actually do that case successfully with all these shake communications. Of course there's the stump shade because it's an implant crown yeah, and then we could uh, layer this after we evaluated everything. So now my computer is stopping here. You're very good. Okay. Let's go back very quick here. That's kind of for morphology, for, for uh, line angles and, and anatomy basically. And the final crown. Uh, matching very nice. So the patient was very happy. Uh, Will was happy too, Dr. Martin. So that was a very successful case. Without that communication, we would not be able to do that. Yeah, so that's kind of where I definitely would like to stress on a little bit. Communication is key and our camera is our, it's a great communication tool. Another case also, again, you see everything is retracted, everything is on the side and it's basically made some room that we don't really get kind of distorted with lips and with fingers, with whatever. So use retractors, retractors, especially these self retractors, these clear ones, they're, they hold by themselves. They're perfect for that. Yeah, as you see here, same thing. What I want to stress a little bit on here is angulation. You see, it's, it's a frontal shot, and I'll, I'll show this in a second. Um, again, light shade, darker shade, so I, that allows me to actually evaluate it. The third shade, so I always like to have three shade taps. That's actually the A3 is very close to the body. Uh, the A3.5 is a little bit dark, and the 1M2 was more like for the incisal color basically. So that's important. So always I work with three shade taps. And then for the stump shade or the cervical area, we have the cervical shade. The CT is kind of called cervical translucency. That's from my porcelain shade guide basically. But that allowed me now to match the crown pretty close as a single central on the first shot. That's kind of definitely a successful result later on. Yeah, so that's how we can work. So Let's go away from all these beauty shots. Let's talk a little bit about equipment. Equipment is, I think, uh, most likely one of the most important um, sections of that meeting for you guys. Um, the, we're basically differentiating with, between DSLR and mirrorless camera. So the DSLR, and I see there, I'm missing the R, it's a digital single lens reflex. That means DSLR, so R for reflex. That is a mirror camera. So what means I actually have 
in the camera body a mirror in in that field here so the picture comes to that mirror gets reflected and then processed in the digital processor basically on the mirrorless camera i don't have that mirror obviously it's a mirrorless camera i have a chip the chip does basically the same thing the picture comes to the lens to the chip and a computer is processing that picture to a photo to a digital photo so it does the same, same thing basically in a different physical way or digital way. There are advantages, disadvantages. I wrote them down. I mean, there are much more. They're just things I'm, I'm having Im immediately in my mind. What I like on, on DSLR cameras is it works with all lenses. Yeah? So every all lenses I have right now, analog or digital lenses work with my camera. It is a bigger body that can now be good or bad. For me, I like a bigger body because of my hands. They grip the body and they just can hold it nicely and I can work with it. On a mirrorless camera, the body is a little bit smaller. For females, maybe really good because it's not so big and not so heavy. It's lighter usually. Yeah, so that's kind of the advantages, disadvantages. Um, on the DSLR camera, I like it's a known technology for years. Yeah, so we we utilizing these cameras for for long 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 time and they work and that's great and we know if we know photography we know how to make the settings we know how to get more depth in a photo etc cetera, etc cetera. on the mirrorless camera um i usually have a little bit less depth basically what i see the new cameras now they're getting better and better you barely see a difference to be very clear um but i have limitations in lenses what means I cannot utilize all my lenses I have on a mirrorless camera, even if it's the same brand. So I have to make sure I have lenses that are compatible with both. Uh, for example, Canon has that so-called red stripe lens. Yeah, it's a very professional lenses. They go on both. They work with both mirrorless and mirror cam and, and, and DSLR cameras. Yeah, all the more regular lenses from Canon would not work on a Canon mirrorless camera. So that's very important just to kind of to, to differentiate a little bit and to, to know. Um, nowadays, if I would buy a new camera body, I would go mirrorless just to be on top of the time, to be time conform. You don't want to buy something outdated, right? So I would go, most I go with the mirrorless camera just to be on top and to be compatible with all systems in the future. So also um, a big important uh, decision or question is always, what brand are we going with, you know? Are we going with Canon or Nikon? Are you Canon guy, Nikon guy? On a DSLR, it's very clear, these two brands are the most common camera brands especially in dental and i do not tell you which one is better because there is no better it's a preference it's android or iphone it's basically apple or windows it's canon or nikon um there is not something better it's a purely preference thing they both are fantastic companies with a phenomenal quality i personally like canon more just because the one thing is I, I think and I like the glass, the lens, the Canon lens more than the Nikon lens. That's the only reason I like Canon more. And I also know the new mirrorless cameras from Canon are just literally killer. These are, are really amazing cameras. They are now really made a big step forward and even past, I think even past Sony, because Sony was the leader over the last two years, three years even, on mirrorless cameras in terms of photo quality. But Canon definitely caught up and have some really nice models out there and I would love to get one. So um, that's kind of the, the deal on mirrorless Canon, Nikon, Sony, they're all fantastic. I think Canon now really stepped forward on mirrorless cameras. On a DSLR side, I think Canon and Nikon are really leveling equally and there are some preferences. Nikon maybe has a better body Canon has the, maybe the little better lens, but do you really see a difference? I don't think so, to be clear. Yeah, it's, it's a preference. So um, now let's talk about technique, okay? Equipment is great, but we have to use, we have to know how to use our, our equipment. And let me also be very clear. Um, if you think you, your photos don't look good or you don't like the look of your photos, 
and you want to buy it because of this a new camera, don't do it because it will not be your camera. It's most likely either you, the lighting or the lens. So the camera body, you don't have to have the most expensive, biggest and best camera body on the world. It does really, it's secondary. Important is the lens and the lighting and the person who has to remote everything. Yeah? So um, the body, I work with the Canon uh, 70D, for example, that's not a professional camera. It's kind of a semi-professional camera. Um, so it's with the crop sensor, um, it's also too deep now for today, but that camera is, is fantastic serves me great. I can even do nice videos with the camera. Um, but there are much more expensive bodies on the market. But for now, I don't have a need for that. Yeah, so that camera is fantastic for me. It's a camera far, far below $1,000. Yeah, so that's kind of my lens, for example, I have kind of something like this, that red stripe lens here as a telescopic lens. Um, that's more expensive than my body, than my camera body. Um, by the way, on lenses, uh, for macro photography, you need somewhere between 85 and 120 millimeter telescopic macro. That's your number you want to be in. My macro is a 100 millimeter macro telescopic macro lens. So that's kind of where you have to be in for dental because that gives you the right distance to the teeth or to the mouth, but also gives you the right size and the right macro quality to actually be able to to have these, these beautiful shots. So now, um, patient position to the camera clearly is, first of all, not in a dental chair. So don't do photography, and I know some people are, oh my God, now I have to stand them up. Yes, the worst is to have actually a side picture on a patient. I think I have some slides later on at the, at the, at the finish. Um, for us technicians, they are, I wouldn't say worthless, but they are just not good. Yeah, because I don't see really contours. The light is never right. And you have a hard time giving me a straight picture. So I would never put the patient in a dental chair to take pictures. That's not appropriate. Yeah, so basically, I would recommend either stand the patient upright or sitting it on a chair. And sometimes patients have that thing when they sit on a chair, they, they do this or they do this. When you just smile, they smile like this. So that doesn't help you as well. So what I always uh, recommend here, holding a book or box to the wall with the head. So put a little box like carton or whatever, or a, a small book on the head and tell them, just hold this with your head to the wall. Usually that gives you a straight shot. It's a little trick, what works really nice. Uh, black or white background is preferred. Um, usually light up. Yeah, so here in the lab we have, um, you should see my setup right now where I'm talking to, I, I cannot show you right now, but we have different lights and everything. Of course, in a dental office, you sometimes don't have that room. Yeah, so that's just something we maybe have to talk more in the course uh, where I really can show you how to make a very small setup or a, a nice, beautiful light setup in a small office. I can show you how to do that. That's not a problem. Yeah, so, but that's important, black, white or black background. And, um, Patient upright, not in a dental chair. So next thing, camera angulation to the patient's head. So now you have the patient sitting here um, or standing upright in the back is the wall basically. And here's the, maybe a little book or head uh, or box. So now the camera, you position straight to the face. I always kind of target the tip of the nose to my camera lens. That's a good target. Why? Because I would like to have the camera slightly tilted that I have a shot from, from up down to the teeth, to the, four, to, the, to the two centrals, to eight and nine basically. I don't want to have it kind of like here, like, like, like straight. What happens, you're getting a wrong reading on line angles when the patient is straight. Yeah? So you'd like to have that shot just a hair up that you have a little bit of a tilt to that anterior shot. And I'll show you why. So this is basically patient lays there and you make that shot from almost from underneath in the dental chair. It's just not good. First of all, the color may be, but even the color can be a false reading. Yeah, because light reflection works differently if you don't have it straight on. 
but the next thing I compare, that's the shot patient upright. And you have that shot very slightly from, from, from the tip of the nose down to the centrals. So what do you see? You see actually the teeth in the real shape, in the real anatomy, how the teeth are, especially the upper anterior teeth. And what you see as well is you see the line angles. So for me, I see much more I, than I see on the other picture before. Yeah, now I see actually contours. I see where the light breaks, where shadows are. And I see now exactly if I want to replicate a crown uh, or a wax up and I utilize photos for that, I see more how can I basically put everything in, in terms, of, terms of contours together. Also, it gives me much more information about the coloration because now I have that straight shot, the light reflects perfectly. And now I see much more where actually the, the white calcifications are, where the translucency is, how the, the more opacity is in the body placed basically of that tooth. So it gives you much more information. Just with that little angle change, you're literally creating a different tooth on the photo. So that's important to understand kind of the flow of that. Yeah. Um, so now if you talk about lighting, we talked about kind of line angles here and shadows and so on. So lighting is a very, very important thing. I would say lighting is most likely the most important factor on photography in general, but especially in dental photography, because you can do so much with good lighting. For example, this is our donut and that's for beauty shots, not for color communication. For color communication, the problem is, I'll show you why, it makes everything glossy. So it will basically um, almost like, like a sponge go over that beautiful picture and smear all contours and colorations away and make it just beautiful glossy. Yeah? So it doesn't really help us uh, for color communication. It helps us to make a final photo of a beautiful veneer case, what we would like to zoom in and make a poster and putting it on our wall in a waiting room. That's perfect. Or for a web presentation, putting it on slides for the waiting room to see before after pictures. Perfect for that. Yeah. So that donut is really amazing. It's very cheap. It's 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. But um, it gives you really nice, beautiful shots for portrait uh, photography. Fantastic. Yeah. Because it, it, it glosses everything out in the face, makes beautiful faces. Um, you don't see any irregularities in the skin and stuff. So it really makes a beautiful shot. So then ring flash. I'm my, my biggest enemy. <laughs> Why is the ring flash my biggest enemy? Because it's so easy to use at almost every dental office does the photos with a ring flash. What happens? I'm getting this. And a total overexposed shape picture that doesn't tell me anything. I, it's, I see it's a 2M1, right? So we, we can see this, but this is just a white tooth. And this number nine, where we take the tooth for doing number eight, this is our, our quantum tooth base where we're taking the shade. I don't see anything. So, and that's a very typical photo done with the ring flash. So I would not recommend ring flashes, especially for anterior shots just because they're, glossy, they're, they're lighting everything overexposing out. Yes, we can adjust the ring flash so we can turn it down a little bit, et cetera, et cetera. But I have a stationary light around my lens like this and just flashing it on that object. I have no control basically or less control. Yeah? Great ring flashes are for doing posterior crown shots or so posterior teeth shots, first, second molars, if I can retract so far because they're glossing everything, they, they lighten everything out in the mouth. And all the way in the back, it's so dark anyway, so I need the additional light of the ring flash. But generally speaking, for dental photography, especially in the aesthetic zone, ring flashes are out. I would not recommend them. Very straightforward. I would recommend more something like this. Also very easy setup because I have a twin flash basically set up next to the lens and I can actually wrote them, I can rotate them almost 360, and that allows me to get more control over lighting. Yeah, so that's, all, that's something I used to do my photos for years, very successfully. And that's photo you see right next to it, that's done with that flash. Yeah, it's a pretty decent photo for actually showing 
a nice anterior case or doing a nice shake communication. Very nice. What I'm utilizing nowadays is more something like this, brackets basically, and they're adjustable. I'm using the OWL bracket. It's a company in Turkey. Um, and for me, that's the best bracket on the market. Just It's light, very light. And it comes in two different sizes, as you see here, the big size, the small size. The big size is more also for laboratory photography because I can actually adjust that more and I can really go very, very outside and can do a benchtop photography out of my hand. But also what I love on that bracket, it can be folded extremely small. That's just absolutely phenomenal. And these little flash hats, they are like ball heads. So I can literally rotate them in all different directions, which is, works extremely nice. What I like on that bracket as well is, even if I have to have the flashes very close together, if I do portrait photography and they really have to get light from me to, the, to, that, to that face, to that, to that patient or to that model, um, I can just put the flashes next to my lens yeah, and have really straight flash, almost like a ring flash. Uh, or I can put them out um, like on a, in a few slides I'm going to show you um, how to basically do a nice light setup. So that's kind of the, usually my equipment I'm working with. I, I went from here to here. I never used ring flash for me here. It doesn't make any sense in the laboratory anyway. And I use this for portraits and for beauty shots uh, for final restorations basically. So that's kind of usually the setup I'm working with. So now that's by the way is with the bracket. Yeah, as you see much more control over light, everything is nice lighted out, beautiful uh, skin tone. Yeah, you don't see any scratches or so. It's really nice. I use, utilize some soft boxes, usually for soft boxes around the flash, I use just uh, copy paper, one-sided or double-sided copy paper, put this around um, and that diffuses, that, not a soft box, actually diffusers, it diffuses the light and has less reflections. For shape communication, I just cast use the flash bare. I actually like this the most because I don't diffuse anything, so I don't irritate light in any way. So this is kind of the, the final case here, uh, was a, a number eight, what we did here, single central as well, and um, the final shot basically. So um, let's move forward to positioning um, the camera and the light to the object, to the patient. So our little uh, patient is here, little, little head is here, our blue head. <laughs> and you see now the camera with these brackets basically. And um, usually I position them out of the camera around, let's say 15 inches. And then I have them in a 45 to 60 degree angle to that object. Important is to have both flashes the same angle. Yeah, you don't want to have one like this and one like this because that will give you a false picture. You want to have both the same way angle to that mouth or to the tooth to make that shot, to make that photo. Um, 45 to 60 degree, I put it in just because if you go more away with your camera, you maybe have to go more to 60 degree. If you go more closer, you want to go to a, to, a, to a more tighter angulation, like a 45 degree. So it depends where your position is and you can play with that, yeah? Um, I saw a fantastic setup, also Dr. Mary Lopez's office actually. Um, she does, instead of the twin flashes, she actually puts two flashes on tripods and has a stationary, a stationary flash and can move with the camera very light back and forth that allows her to be very, very flexible with that patient to, to take the photos. Um, what you need for that is a, an extra photo room or so where the patient really sits somewhere and, and you barely can do it in your operatory because tripods and, and I know, you know how it is in, in my operatory is pretty tight. <laughs> so, but that's a very interesting setup what she did and she makes absolute stunning photos with that. I love it. Yeah, so that's kind of definitely cool. So lighting setup is extremely important. Just keep in mind 45 to 60 degree angulation for, for shade photography. Um, that kind of definitely is, is very important to keep that in mind. That gives you the best reading. Um, now, the most asked question, what I got asked always is camera settings, right? So camera settings, um, and I share with you my settings and some 
maybe colleagues of yours or colleague of mine, they use a little bit slight difference. That's the reason I put the range on there. So for intraoral photos or for shade taken, I utilize usually an f-stop between 29 and 32. And the f-stop is on your camera, the wheel, and you see it on the display. Um, the number usually goes from 2.9 up to 32 or even 39. Yes, And that basically gives you, and I'll show you this, uh, the opening of, of the aperture in your lens. So as higher that number, as higher that f-stop number, as smaller is the opening in the lens when you take the picture. When you take a picture, it will, will open and close. And that opening is very small on a 29 or 32. And that allows you to have everything in focus because the camera doesn't have time to take in consideration different areas. It's just focus on this, that everything in focus. So what, when you do that, you will realize everything here around that photo is super, super focused. So like this here, that was done with the 29. You would not recognize, would not realize where do I actually take my focus on because everything on that photo is in focus. The mouth, the lips, the nose, tip of the nose. You even see the very shiny little hairs on the skin. You see the lips, you see everything on that photo. And that's, you need a very high f-stop for a very small aperture. So it's very, it's not a little misleading because it will work with that high number and then it's, it's little, right? But that's important. Also important to know is that high f-stop basically and small aperture does not allow for the camera to get a lot of light into that lens. And um, to think about that lens is that big. So now you make that lens basically smaller with that. So that hap, that means not a lot of light goes through. So you have to give it more lighting with your flash. That's important you understand as well. Yeah. The ISO usually, I didn't write it down here, is always between 100 and 200 on these photos. Yeah. That gives me the ideal lighting, uh, the, the sensitivity of your, of your, of your uh, photo taking. So f-stop 29 to 32. So now extra oral photos, what means more like a face or a shot of the mouth smiling or whatsoever. I usually, or even benchtop photography, I utilize usually 18 to 22 if I have to. And that allows me to get more light in, that allows me to use a, a lower flash or the flashes are more far away and really have a nice lit out photo. And still everything is kind of good in focus. Yeah. So now if I want to go to portrait photography, the problem most of the time, especially in dental offices where you don't have all the room for the big lights, is lighting. So I can go with my f-stop below 12. Yeah, so usually I have it between 9 and 10 for portraits. Why? Portraits don't have to be so extremely focused that I see every single pore in your skin. Yeah, so I want to have a nice shot. I want to have a nice smile. Uh, for a lecture or for the waiting room before or after pictures with the patient like to like to show the face um, So I don't need the crispiness of a 32 I can work with the 12 with the f-stop of 12 to have everything lit up And then you, you realize when you take the photo your lens is bigger inside so more lights coming in You don't need that high flash on that on a f-stop with 10 for example Yeah, so we do portraits here and I usually do a 10 f-stop and then we utilize some external light and it's most of the time already enough. So for most of your pictures in shade taking, you have to work with a 29 f-stop, 32 maybe, I usually have 29, 100 ISO and your timing is usually between 100 and 125. And that's kind of your standard setting for shade communication. Yeah, for more beauty shots, full face or smile, use 18 to 22 f-stop. That's kind of the range where you want to be, okay? Um, if there are any questions, please let me know. We have still some time later on to ask, to answer some questions, but that's kind of the, the basic setting. So now, um, after we talked about the high-end camera, so now how about iPhone photography? And with iPhone, I mean in general smartphone, but it's just generalized. Everybody is talking about, oh, can I use my iPhone? Yes, so iPhone photography or smartphone photography in dental is definitely not a problem. Yeah, we definitely can communicate shade or color or all the aesthetic information you would like to transfer to us 
with your phone. There are just certain things you have to take into consideration and you have to watch out for. First of all, um, you have to utilize your Zoom on your phone. Why? You can also go very close, right? The problem is if you go very close and you imagine, I can show you my phone here, you have that little small lens here, yeah? It's, it can be a million megapascal, it doesn't matter. It will distort the photo. Why? Because if I take my coffee cup, I love the Zoom meetings, you can see me, I can show you things. If you lose this coffee cup and you go with your iPhone like this, what happens, you will have that fish eye effect. Yeah? It will distort because that, that little camera would like to capture everything, but it's, it's smaller than the object, so it will distort. So now if you take that and go away, but zoom in, the object, you, you actually wide the depth of field. So you automatically, if you go away with your, with your lens, you give the lens more room to capture the whole object. So that means the lens actually can take a more true picture of what you show the lens to take a photo. And then with this, you can then zoom in with your zoom function and you have still no distortion. That's extremely important. So please utilize that. Yeah, I always recommend try to be at least one foot away from your object because usually you can have easier three times uh, zoom magnification in your phone to zoom in. Yeah, so a foot away gives you enough distance and gives you enough basically zoom to see everything still. And then always for shade communication in or for communication channel, use landscape. Don't use it like this. Yeah, it's just, oh, there's the lens. Also videos, never use videos like this because you always have the long videos. So always use landscape, photography or videography. That's very important, yeah. Landscape makes life easier, especially when we work on these pictures we wanna see something more. So now devices for the iPhone to help. Um, Smiline has two beautiful devices. One is this here, which is just a filter uh, and the light um, that actually is beautiful because it has the size of I would say roughly around six anteriors, so it fits rightly over the mouth. And with that filter here, that's called a polarization filter. So I can actually take a photo, and I forgot to put a picture in there of that. But it basically takes out all the glare of the of the teeth, and it gives me a polarized photo what means I don't have any enamel showing actually. So the enamel is, it looks like the enamel is just taken out. Yeah, you see the pure dentin. That helps me as a ceramist a lot to layer or to build my layer technique or build my layer scheme. Yeah, I can also then take a polarized photo of my tooth and see that and can compare both photos. So that polarization filter is extremely um, valuable. It's, it's a great tool. So I have the same filter on this device here, which is called the MDP. The MDP is a holder for the iPhone or for the smartphone in general. And on the other side, you see is here a little bit our LED lights. And these lights are very, very strong. And it has roughly a 45 degree angulation in, in this here. So that already gives you that angle what you wanna have to take photos. Yeah, so, or movie or little videos of that patient. So you have a perfect angulation to that tooth or to the mouth for, for shade communication and everything is lit up. And you can take beautiful picture, you hold it stationary, you zoom in, zoom out, and you basically have a great tool for communicating uh, uh, shades, for communicating aesthetic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this device is not cheap. So you have to really look into, ah, do I go with this here or do I invest that money in a DSLR camera? You're most like getting already a DSLR camera for that price. But with this device, it is so easy and you can have it always set up in your laboratory or in your office that literally from the assistant or the office manager back to, the, to your clinician yourself, you can all take the same photos. So you have an extremely well uh, done consistency in your photos. That's what I like on that device for consistency, for communication purpose. And if you have a stationary phone in there, just for that, you literally can already email 
or text message the photos out to the person you would like to communicate it with. So if you want to send the case to Alex, you take the impression, you take the photos, and a patient leaves your office, you already can just text to the photos with the patient name or with the number of the, with the, with the uh, patient number or so. Yeah? I mean, if you don't want to text patient names because of, of HIPAA compliance, yeah? so you just have a, a, a number, which the same number is then later on on the chart. When you get the case, you, you can then kind of uh, have the same consistency there. So that, therefore, this is just absolute phenomenal. You can communicate right out or you can save the photos from that phone straight into Dropbox or box.com and all these uh, things basically where you want to store your your patient data or your patient photos basically so that's kind of what I really 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 like on, on that photo basically so um, we're coming more towards the end I see there are some questions we'll get to that in a second I just want to conclude a little bit um, that we are on the same page. Uh, time is running out, unfortunately. It's, it's, time is our biggest enemy, even in a, in a pandemic, right? Um, so I summarized just a slide with not so good pictures. Yeah? So when I start kind of on the upper left, basically, one thing is this is a very typical smartphone photo with no lights, with no special lighting or so it doesn't really help me. I don't see really a shade here, to be very honest. Uh, light is, is, is distracting me. Um, I don't see the shade. So you see the, the shade tab is cut off here. So I, it's a 1M something, 1M1, 1M2, 1M whatever. So I don't really know what shade I'm seeing. On the other one, there's no shade at all visible. So that's a problem. Yeah. Also, angulation is an issue. I don't see the teeth really nice. Uh, from the whole tooth shape in front, that's a problem. So same photo here, uh, same page, you can tell it's the, same, it's the same communication. So most likely the doctor realized, oh, or the assistant, man, we did not show uh, the shade tabs. Let's do a second one more far away and show what we actually have on, on colors. But still the angulation is off, um, the light is off, that's even out of focus. Yeah, out of focus photos, they don't really go at all because they don't give us enough information. Yeah? If I look at this photo here, that's done with that donut, right? Everything is glared out. Everything is shiny and nice. Doesn't give me any information about shade or characterization of teeth. Shade is just not color. It's also characterization. It's grace lines, it's, it's some calcifications here, some little discoloration there. So shade is many, many things. Yeah. So um, this photo doesn't give me any information about that. On top of this, I see more beard and lower lip than anything else. Yeah. So the focus point on this photo is not really where I would like to see. The photo next here, same thing here. The lip is covering half of the teeth. So no, no retraction. Um, the, the angulation is off, patient lives in the chair in the back and summer is the camera and uh, it's out of focus. Out of focus doesn't really help. Also taken with the donut, very glared out. Same on this side here, out of focus, the lips are covering half of the teeth, doesn't really help me, no retract. There's one retractor on one side, but no retract on the other side. And yes, okay, so, well, that's an implant crown, we're not looking at this teeth, of course we're looking at this side. If I want to make a beautiful case and that crown matching into that whole arch, I would like to see everything yeah, to be able to actually measure or look at the other side as well, that I have a nice aesthetic result. Yeah, I have to balance colors out. It's very important. Yeah? So there is never too much information, but it's always not enough. That's very important to, to also understand. Now on the photo down here, um, that's actually not so bad. Yeah, I, I see a nice lid out, a nice color. I see uh, the whole tooth, but still, I would just like to retract it better, yeah, to have more room. Also, it's better to have that shape tab actually not horizontal, to have it vertical. What means either you turn around the incisal, meet the incisal, or you turn it around that the neck meets the neck. Yeah, so you see all these shade tabs, they're more going into the flow with the teeth. Much better for communication purpose. So now that's some better examples for the conclusion. Basically here, you see shot is front. Yeah, um, the lip could be more retracted. That's the only thing that I would 
kind of say that should be better. I used four shade tabs here from very light to more dark. Uh, and I see all the teeth. I see a nice lit out uh, picture. I see my shade codes, basically, I need to see. So I see everything. I can work with that. Yeah, I can work with that to actually finish a case like this. This is the temporary here, number eight. That is the final case. Single crown with a good shade communication is the slam dunk. Yeah, so that can definitely be, that can definitely work. Um, coming to the end, I would like to remind you guys, we have uh, our YouTube channel. Um, I'm working on finishing our Zirconia video to, to put online. We will have um, multiple, multiple new ideas for really awesome education videos. So please subscribe, then you also get all the news, you will get all the information and know it immediately when we have a new video out there. And I hope you enjoy that. Um, leave us a message on YouTube channel. It's always good to know what you think. Yeah, to improve, we would like to get better. And I'm here with our opening up for some questions, if there are, and some requests. So, Daniela, are you here? I am here. So, I first Fantastic. want to launch a poll. And um, the poll is asking, which camera brand are you primarily using to take clinical photographs? So while Alex, you read the questions in the chat box, I thought that I'd first like to just ask everyone if they can kindly fill out this poll question and then we can you know, come back to that as well. So we do have a question while everybody's filling this out. We do have a question from Dr. Michael Frost. Can you use your 100 millimeter lens for portrait also? Yes, you can. I do it. So I love my 100 millimeter because that's my best lens I have in my whole lens quiver. And um, what I like on a lens is just, it's the red stripe from Canon, what I have. And it just makes beautiful photos. So what I do, basically, I just go far away. I, I move myself back and then I work usually with extra lights. So I have then either soft boxes left and right of the patient, or I do what Dr. Lopez is doing. I have flashes on a tripod to the patient basically. So that works no problem. If you have a very, very powerful flash, twin flash on your, on your camera, you can just point it to the patient and can make a portrait. It's much nicer to work with your camera with that big lens without flash and have extra flash basically then or lighting to the patient or next to the patient. That's much better. Uh, but yes, I, I love to do that, to do the portraits with that, with that, uh, with that lens actually, with the 100 millimeter macro is perfect for portraits. You know? Otherwise, what's nice with portraits, what gets really awesome um, shapes and, and beautiful artsy portrait looks is if you use a wide angle lens. So if you go down actually the other direction, if you use a more a 35, 40 millimeter, not too far down, not in the 20th, but in the 35 range, you're getting gorgeous and sometimes funny looking portraits, but they're really cool. They're very artsy and you can go very, very close. That's fun too. But if you ask me for the 100 millimeters, yes, you can absolutely use it. You just have to move a little bit more back. So you have to, you have, to have some more room basically. Otherwise, portraits with a 75, 65, or even 55 millimeter lens, then you can go closer to the patient. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank cool. you. More questions? So we were going to get to, we have one comment from Dr. Ginsburg. Dr. Yes. Ginsburg mentioned that when he joined the call today, he saw an image of an angled rectangular light source with a phone mounted in the center. I believe that was probably the smile line. Um, yes. Uh, capture. Can you go through that again? What it's called and how? That yeah, I go. I go back to that very quick. In the meantime, while you're looking for that, we did have the poll, and the results are that most people are using Canon. Um, we Yay, have Canon strong. <laughs> <laughs> so the majority of attendees are using Canon. We do have one person using the Nikon. We didn't have anybody that answered Sony, iPhone, or anything else. Cool. Cool, that's good. So uh, Dr. Ginsburg, this, uh, this is the setup. Um, it is, that's available from Smileline USA. You can look it up, smilelineusa.com. Um, that, that device allows to mount the iPhone on a light source on the left side there, um, which basically gives you already the, the, the oops, yeah, okay. Uh, the, the angulation, what you see here, left and right, 
that you have that angle from the camera to the patient, that your light source is basically coming in roughly a 45 degree angulation to the mouth or to the teeth to get kind of that photo you're looking for for shade communication. It has LED lights, LED lighting, it's a constant light, so it's not a flash, which is nice too, you see more. On top of this, you see that filter here, that's a polarization filter you can actually clip on on the other side and you can have a polarized photo of that tooth, which allows to get out the glare and see more the dentin color of that tooth. So for shade communication, that's a really, really awesome device. Uh, I mentioned during my lecture that we can use, you can use it in your office and the whole staff can actually work with that with the same consistency. You don't have to go through settings. You don't have to explain how the twin flash has to be angulated, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a very easy to use device for, for multi-user multi, multi -user device, basically. It's very nice. And with the phone, you can then text, email, or Dropbox photos immediately out. Thank you. I hope that you're welcome. You're welcome. Great. Any more questions? That's it, I think, right? Everybody is happy. Um, so I just want to say there are, there's much, much more in dental photography what we can actually talk and um, what should be there, basically. So it's just the time is very condensed. Usually these photo courses are two-day courses, and we did them already multiple times here in the laboratory, and I hope with all the COVID-19 at some point, I miss so much being out there and, and do hands-on courses. Um, I really miss it. So I hope we can do that in the future again to have people here or I go out and we do these photo photography courses. I just see another, another question coming in. Are those slave flashes for portraits? When you talk about the slave flashes, um, are you talking about external flashes um, or the twin flash what I showed? Can you unmute him? Danielle? Yeah. I'm meeting Dr. Frost. Dr. Frost, we should be able to hear you. Can you speak into your microphone? External, yeah, he just wrote on external. Yes, so the external, yes, you can use for portrait. Um, it's just basically positioning. You usually position them a little bit more, not from the side of the patient, so more kind of towards the front of the patient. And you then have to play with the, with the strength of the flash itself. So you have to just bump it up a little bit that enough flash comes to the face. I use slave flashes always for portraits. Uh, so for my portraits, um, I use sometimes actual constant lighting. Um, I can maybe, let's see if I can rotate my computer. I can show you if these soft boxes here or, or here. I also have um, these LED constant lights here. Now for me, they, they make me sweat right now. It's pretty warm here. So I have this or I use uh, the slave flashes basically. It depends on my setting. If I'm here in my studio, I have all these lights. I don't need it. If I'm in a dental office or we are limited in, in room, yes, I use the external slave flashes for portraits. Oh, you don't have a mic. Okay, no problem. We can write, we can write, you can write and I can talk. So we then use a light, utilize basically um, slave flashes that work perfectly, absolutely. I hope that answers your question. Cool. Yeah, so um, it seems like no more questions. We have a poll. So we're also going to send you all a email with the survey again. Please fill out the survey. It's very, very important for me to know um, if there is any other requests or what we maybe could change in our client connect meetings our webinars. I like to learn as well where I can get better in, in, in speaking, in, in educating, in showing, and not forgetting something. And um, also, I would like to know what you would like to know. Yeah. So if there's any topic you really are interested in to learn about the, the client uh, or the, the, the clinician technician relationship, that's I think the most important thing here, then please let us know. That's very, very important. Okay. Um, another question. Do you like black background for shade photo? Yes, I do. Black background is fantastic. You have these little uh, black uh, plates you can put into the mouth. Otherwise, just mouth open, take the photo is also good for shade photo or gray background is great. Everything else better than white. White is not good for, for, for shade taken as a background. Yeah. 
So uh, I want to say here, it's thank you so much for joining our, our Client Connect webinar today. And I'm so looking forward um, to see you next time. Please look out for the email we're sending out for, for the invite. And uh, we will all see you soon, hopefully. And hopefully everybody will be very, very busy over the next weeks to get back into business. That's, I think, what we all want. Let's just see one more question. Do you use black retractors? And if so, where do you purchase them? Where do you get the twin flash brackets? So the twin flash bracket is, um, I don't know if you can still hear me. Um, the twin flash bracket is from OWL bracket, O-W-L. You can Google online OWL bracket. And uh, I use clear retractors, clear uh, self-holding retractors. They have that half moon down there and they hold basically the patient lips. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay safe.